Hey there, welcome to my channel or welcome back. Today I'll be giving you the best tips I've learned throughout my time with Diablo 4. Like and subscribe if you feel like it, or don't. Thanks for watching anyway, and let's not waste any more time. My first tip has to do with horses and mounts. If you're in the early game, you'll see that you have to complete the quest Donnan's Favour to gain access to mounts. You'll unlock the quest for Donnan's Favour during Act 4. So if you're in the early game wondering when you're going to get your horse, it's not going to be for a while. So yeah, that's my first Diablo 4 tip. Give up. You can make your way through the campaign pretty quickly though if it's what you choose to solely focus on. Which brings us to the next subject, level scaling. It's pretty obvious, but I just thought I'll point it out because if you're struggling, grinding for levels isn't going to help you. What is going to help you is how you choose to spend your skill points when you do level up. So take a bit of time for yourself to learn your class and look at the skill tree and see how you want to build your character. It's practically free to respec and maybe through experimentation you'll find something that just works better for you. Or you can just look up a guide. I hear there's a pretty good one for a blood necromancer out there. But if you are struggling, the game's difficulty is just a product of how much you know. So you'll get there eventually, I believe in you. But speaking of difficulty, another system that'll help you tackle the game is Renown. Renown gives you crucial rewards for completing certain side objectives that are strewn throughout the map or the world of Diablo. There are five tiers to be unlocked in five different regions. Each time you unlock a tier having gained enough renown, you unlock a reward. For example, in the first region, Fractured Peaks. When you reach 200 renown, you'll gain a skill point and some experience. Then when you hit 500 renown, it increases your total potion capacity by 1. And at 900 renown, you'll gain another skill point. There are 5 different regions with their own renown score, but they all give the same rewards. So I recommend reaching 500 renown in every single region you come across, because doing this will upgrade your maximum potion capacity for every single region, and give you at least 5 extra skill points along the way. So you'll get 5 bonus skill points and 5 bonus potions. And if you hit 900 renown in every area, you'll get a bonus of 10 skill points, which will definitely make your character a lot stronger in the long run. Be aware in your first playthrough you can only unlock the first three tiers of renown in each area. You can only unlock tiers 4 and 5 in nightmare mode. If you open your map and you go to view rewards, you can see your progression of renown for each area. Keep in mind you'll have to claim the reward in this menu manually. <laughs> Here you can also see a legend of what activities will give you what amount of renown. In my opinion, completing side quests and side dungeons is the best way to gain renown. A lot of the other renown you'll just unlock passively by finding new areas. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind with map progression and unlocking rewards. Every skill point or potion you claim as a reward is unlocked for every single character you have on this realm, or your realm. So this means if you start a new character, they will have all the skill points and all the potions that you have already unlocked for your previous characters. Which is just something to keep in mind, I don't really mind it at all. However, whenever you make a new character or go to a new save, all your map progression is wiped. So you have to do all the side quests and side dungeons again in order to gain your renown back up. And if that sounds dumb, that's because it is. But my main point is to reach 500 renown in every single region you come across just to get that maximum potion capacity up. Moving on, let's talk about equipment. Salvaging and upgrading. There are four different tiers of item, common, magic, rare, and legendary. Rare and legendary gear being the best, of course. You can upgrade your armor and weapons at the blacksmith. Depending on the rarity is how many times the item can be upgraded. Common you can upgrade once, magic twice, rare three times, and legendary four times. The higher level the upgrade, the better materials you'll need. Salvaging common gear will give you the stuff you need for level 1 upgrades. Salvaging magic gear will give you the stuff you need for level 2 upgrades. Salvaging rare gear will give you the stuff you need for level 3 upgrades. And salvaging legendary items will give you the materials you need for level 4 upgrades. So you'll want to salvage often in order to have the materials you need to upgrade whatever armor you like throughout your playthrough. And if you have gems socketed into any of your gear, when you salvage or sell it, you'll just get your gems straight back into your inventory. So feel free to use any gem you have whenever you've got it. 
To upgrade your rings and amulets, you just have to go to the jeweler instead of the blacksmith. At the jeweler, you can also craft gems. Every three gems you have can be crafted into a better version of that same gem. For example, three chipped rubies will combine into one normal ruby. And your gems are calculated from your stash too. So you can just hoard all your gems in your stash until they're ready to be upgraded so they don't take up any of your inventory space. So keep collecting and upgrading your gems and eventually you'll end up with the best version of each one. And if it doesn't fit for your character, you can just put it in your stash and use it for another character. Additionally, if you find a piece of gear you really like and it doesn't have a socket, you can go to the jeweler and give it a socket. However, do this sparingly as it uses quite a rare item called a sacred prism. It's probably only worth socketing gear post level 50 anyway, but the options there if you want to do it earlier. You can also unsocket gems at the jeweler if you feel like it. Let's talk about potions really quickly. Throughout the game you'll find different plants littered around the place, and you'll want to pick all of these up so you can take the materials to the healer in order to upgrade your potions. If you have the right materials, he can permanently upgrade the potency of your potions. And the amount of materials you need is extremely negligible. Once you reach a higher level, you'll start needing materials from certain monsters, but you'll definitely find them just playing the game. Perhaps the most important thing to remember is to craft elixirs. You constantly have an excess of materials, and every single elixir that you use gives you a 5% experience bonus for 30 minutes, plus whatever specific bonus that elixir gives you. They're worth using just for the flat bonus experience anyway, and you're not going to be able to do anything else with the materials. So now let's see what we can do with legendary gear beyond just salvaging it. So let's go over to the occultist, because this is where legendary items can be destroyed in order to extract their aspect. Aspects are the unique bonus that are attached to legendary items. So in this case, with my legendary focus, my aspect is, while Army of the Dead is active, your minions gain 100% attack speed and take 90% reduced damage. We can then select that legendary item to be destroyed, and you can see the preview of the aspect you're going to get from it. It will also tell you the allowed item types that you can attach the aspect to, and any bonuses they may have. So in this case, if I attach it to a two-handed weapon, the power is increased by 100%, so that's probably the way I would end up going. You can then take that aspect and imprint it into a rare item, turning it into a legendary item. Now something important to keep in mind when doing this is it will destroy your aspect when you imprint it. Then legendary items you've made yourself can no longer be extracted. For example, I can't extract the aspect from my legendary chest armor because I already put an aspect on it. So you can't just keep recycling the same unique bonus when you find one that you like. So just be aware, when you use up your aspect you cannot get it back. Additionally, if you have two legendary pieces of gear with the same aspect, one of those aspects will be cancelled out, you can't double them up. And when you use an aspect on a piece of gear, it'll come up with a little star in its description that says imprinted next to it, so you know that you can't recycle the aspect again. Also at the occultist you can enchant an item, so you can just choose one of its basic bonuses to get rid of something that you don't like. However, the bonus that it's replaced with is completely random. It's only worth doing with things that have no bearing on your character at all, and equipment that you plan on using for a while. Additionally, you can imprint a piece of gear with a codex of power. You get a codex of power whenever you complete a specific dungeon in the overworld. On the map, you can also see which codex of power you'll get for completing which dungeon. This way you can create legendary gear without having to take the aspect from a weapon or piece of armor. Or accessory. However, to imprint a codex of power, you'll need an item that you only get from salvaging legendary gear, so either way you're gonna have to destroy something. In my opinion, you should collect as many aspects as you possibly can for the codex of power. It's a fun way to gain renown and get a good bonus. You can also see which aspects are class specific in the codex of power, so you can just choose to collect aspects that are only fitting for your character. Also, the only way to actually tell that you've completed a side dungeon is to see that there's no codex codex of power to collect there, because that's awesome game design, thanks Blizzard. Over at the Purveyor of Curiosities, you can trade murmuring orbs. These orbs are mainly collected from chests and random events. In exchange for your murmuring orbs, you can get any piece of gear that you like. However, the rarity and stats are completely random. 
You could get something common, you could get something legendary. I'd honestly recommend saving most of them until at least level 50 plus, but sometimes it can be fun to see what you'll get. However, you will want to get whispering keys from him. These keys are used to unlock certain chests throughout the world, and it's better to have your keys in your inventory when you find one than to have to go back to town and trade orbs every single time. Also, keep in mind that the gear that you get from the Purveyor of Curiosity will have a certain level attached to it, and in most cases, this level is far below your own level, if you're deciding to do a lot of side content and that kind of stuff, that is. My final and my best tip is just have fun and enjoy the game. Like and subscribe if you feel like it, there's more Diablo content to come. Regardless, thank you so much for watching and have a great time playing.